Welcome back to Let's Play Nick Tunes Attack of the Hobots for the GBA in what is likely the second final episode. As from this point onward, I'll be doing two levels per episode instead of just one, since we're only going to be playing as Danny in each level. So, it doesn't quite matter who we play through each level as, <laughs> since we're only going to see Danny. But let's go SpongeBob, I guess. So, we saw last episode that we have a new ability. That is a charge attack, which is kind of odd. You just hold the attack button to begin charging attack. But it also makes you attack when you try to charge it, which is kind of awkward. Unless you're invisible, and then start holding the attack button and then switch back. So there are some weird bits as to how this works. It's easiest to show when there are actually enemies around, but the problem is most of the enemies in this level only take one hit to kill, so it's kind of hard to show off the differences in the power. But one weird trick with this attack is that, I mean, for one, you need to hold down the attack button as you run around everywhere if you want to have a charge on you at all times, which is annoying. But the switch to intangibility, you don't actually have to hold the attack button anymore. So it's kind of convenient, and then once you change back to normal, to fire immediately, but it also maintains your charge if you switch to intangible. So for example, it'll stay on a low charge now. There are three levels of charge. The first one is what you're seeing right now. It's just a normal shot. There's a second level of charge, which is that, which is a larger shot, and it makes a slightly louder sound. Not anything too impressive, but Actually, does two points of damage. So one shot, anything for that matter. So it's interesting about the final one, though. So I'm trying a new animation that looks really slow, and that's kind of what I'm using Hadouken type thing. Now, if we try using our strongest attack, once we get the chance, that is. Oh crap. And one weird thing is that for some reason, you lose your charge if you crouch. I don't know why. Oh crap. Okay. Oh, now it's weird having to hold multiple buttons at once. Anyways, though. Oh no! Okay, well, usually, unless an enemy explodes apparently, most of the time when you fire this large shot, it'll actually pierce enemies like that. Okay, so apparently it can go through two enemies, from what we saw there. So it doesn't pierce them forever, but for the most part it normally goes through enemies. So that's your big motivation for using that attack as opposed to anything else. Ultimately not really worth it, but it's not a bad idea, I guess, to just keep a charge on you if you can. But it's not as convenient as you might hope. So while it's very nice to see that Danny's actually getting an upgrade in the attack department, well, it's not as nice as one might hope he would, but at least he can actually deal damage now that's a bit more reasonable. In fact, he has what's a f essentially the best attack of anybody in the game now, too, since he can just fire piercing shots. Why right, these guys take two hits? Oh well, yeah, we've seen it before, but he doesn't pierce them. I don't know why that is. That's odd. So I can charge while I'm crouching. Oh, I crouch. Okay. So, you don't lose your charge when you're crouching if you hold the attack button. Yeah, see? There you go. That's weird. Huh. So if you crouch, whether or not you're invisible, if you crouch without holding the attack button, or if you crouch and then let go, you just lose your charge immediately. I see charging is always the most practical thing to do. So I'm loading. Fine. It does actually take a kind of long time to charge though. So it's not like you can really just run up to an enemy and then charge it quickly and then get rid of them, unfortunately. What else feels we have to tank? The wall of 
laser buffs. It doesn't hit anything. That was joyous. Boat! Thanks. Anyhow. Let's just enjoy the last three we'll probably see of Fairy World. All of you! Out of here. I still like this place's music. Not as much as I once did, admittedly. This... No, it doesn't... The soul's music doesn't feel like it has as much energy as it used to. I don't know why. I just don't get that urge to fly through levels quick as I can anymore. But I still do like it. Not necessarily because of its design in any way, just because of the music. But hey, music is a pretty big deal, at least for me it is, oftentimes. Oh yeah, you can also, uh... Do some weird stuff where if you actually go intangible right as you. Stop it. Could you not? Hi. You also use this as a means to attack while inside of a wall, actually. Almost. Is this how it's gonna be? God! But if you attack, if you change your, uh... If you go intangible rise to attack, you can actually see that the palette gets kind of funny. And then that part of your shot turns black. You can see a bit better of a charge shot, too. Oh, if you time it right. Time the thing right. Yeah, it's gone, see. It's kind of weird. Yeah, there we go. You can actually... I did. I just realized that of all the characters that can see Dib, the only one that can actually find Dib is the one that's a paranormal being. It's nice. I'm curious now. How did that even happen? I hit one of them. Like, it doesn't pierce these things. I'm amused by those things, but I'm not gonna run into them like I should this time around. Anyways, though, what I was trying to do was say that you can actually attack while you're intangible. If you do your first attack while tangible, and then immediately attack afterwards while intangible. If you turn intangible during your first attack, that is just an odd amusing thing you can do. It gives you a better look at how part of your green ghostness turns black. Whatever conclusion you want to make from that. Oh, yeah. Now what is Clamus trying to build with these giant arms in the background of this? Of these labs, anyways. You never see anything that size. It's almost as if this game did not have all that Clamus could offer. Which almost makes it feel like a cop out. Clamus is not operating at full capacity. Anyhow. Nope. Ah, I have learned how to go under that one enemy. Happy to do that. It reminds me though, it doesn't seem like Danny is going to get a speed power up. That makes him one of the three, or not three, two characters that don't. Which makes me really sad, because that was one of my... To me, it's one of the hallmarks of a character being powerful in this game. Having that speed boost. I know it makes all the difference when you're playing at least. You sure feel it. So I just move this speed all the time. And then when you get a speed boost, life is amazing. Because all of a sudden you're moving at oh, stop that explosion. Explosion! God. So all of a sudden you're moving at a ridiculous speed. Anyways. Timmy. 
another robot that only gets hurt when he feels like it. I don't actually know if you do extra damage to bosses with a charge attack or not. I, I'd be willing to find out if I could actually manage to make the enemies take damage in the first place. And they only get hurt when they... I don't know if it's... I'm pretty sure you can hit them without using the tank, but they only seem to get hurt when they feel like it. Which is very rarely, considering that most of my shots here are not doing any damage. And it makes sense if I just hit him and he's still blinking, that's called Mercy Invincibility, but otherwise... Ah. How are we not bring health any lower than that? Timmy! Oh, okay. Nope, oh, I'm moving. <laughs> Shifting in and out of focus. Hunt Ray. I'm trying to imagine how these things work. I have to attack faster. That would actually be really cool if I just did more damage instead, but I guess that's an increase in effectiveness. Nose today. But anyways, cool. I always want to just jump over that gap and then take out the enemy immediately, but when you have characters that attack as slowly as Danny, it's not very practical. But speaking of attacking slowly, basically now we just can keep attacking instead of having to wait after attacking twice in a row. Which actually isn't that helpful in most cases. It doesn't make much of any real difference. Because being able to spam an attack is nice, but it doesn't really help that it's not helping you <laughs> your ability to attack something quickly. And nothing's gonna take more than two minutes anyways. And if your one of your shots are gonna miss, it's most likely they're both gonna miss anyways. Rather every single one that you're firing off rapidly, so. Well Fortunately it's not as practical as one might hope. I have no idea what to do with this time. <laughs> this time slow. In fact, there are no enemies around me. I question some of the power-up placement in this game. Sometimes you'll get power-ups where there's no impact on your life as a whole. Because anything that power-up would actually affect is nowhere near the power-up itself. Or there are other times to point out where things like getting a uh, invisibility glasses upgrade, or, uh, power up as Timmy, and then immediately having to turn to a frog. Speed. Stop that. Danny. Boom. There we go. I question the process of some of the level design in this game. Usually it works. I also have to know a lot of the levels pretty thoroughly at this point since I've gone through them. Is this my 21 time? My 20. No. This is actually. Well, yeah. I have to do some math to figure it out. But it's 20 something. Basically, you do a lot of things a lot in this game without it really being much of anything new. Just by cutting a lot of things out. I will spare you from such misfortunes. Stop that. I'm not even gonna get into wondering how Danny's invisibility doesn't actually leave him intangible. No! That one, I always. That one enemy there always gets me. 
No. No, I mean, I can't really defend against it anyway. That one I predict the appearance of, and actually, I was able to get rid of it that time because my rapid fire rate. I guess that's one reason that it would be nice to have. But really? At fire rate like that, when you have enemies that happen to be invincible for no apparent reason for short periods of time. Dan A! Wait, you actually have to go left to his hand, don't you? Yeah. Hi! Alright, down to the factory. Well, not to the factory yet. I always think that this elevator leads to the factory, it does not. There's another look. Time on these sometimes. There's another elevator that will one day lead us to where we want to be. Ah! Ow. My sore throat did not enjoy that. Thanks. see enough purpose in just keeping a charged attack on me at all times to actually justify doing it, so I'm just gonna not entirely, but largely ignore the fact that I have that upgrade. Instead I'll just happily anticipate our next little upgrade. I still wonder about the mystery of these things. Not these specific platforms, but some of stuff over here. A particular platform that didn't seem to have much of any <sighs> destination stemming from it. Oh, no, that was not the right way to be. I've gotten so tired of walking past these crushers in the game in general that I almost never bother. <laughs> Even trying to get through them at this point. Was I saying last time I went through this level that Tack didn't go through this part? And I then wondered why there were uh, Tack ropes or chains? Because I just now saw that Tack most definitely goes through this part. I could use a charge Tack there. So I guess I'll allow Tack to go. Am I allowed to go up top there? I might have actually done that in an earlier episode too, I don't quite remember. I've done my first playthrough. I just don't remember all the way back then. This has been an oddly long playthrough of the, of the game. Even with all, a lot of the redundancy taken out, you can spend a pretty long amount of time playing this game just in efforts of harm or something. Of course, I'm only. I was mostly playing two levels a week for, as well, but still, I, I'm playing, I think, like, what, 22 episodes, largely? I think this is the 21st episode, if I remember right. Hi, me. Me that can fire bullets at odd angles. How much damage can I do at once now? Apparently not enough, and there are other things shooting at me. I can do more damage than that if I don't have something screwing with me. He never stays in the, uh... He never gets close enough to any of the other machines for it to actually have a very long lasting effect. Really? This game... STOP SHOOTING THROUGH CRAP! Can you move somewhere else? Oh, I'm never seeing that attack. Thank you, stay in that one place. Perfect. Look at that, that's a pretty reasonably lengthed episode. That's nice. Next episode's probably gonna be shorter, maybe. Depends on what I do after I complete the game again, but. I'm still in support of the picnic. Find and float. Alliteration. And we can do a cool thing now! So that's a fun thing to do next episode, so... I look forward to the next episode, and we can actually do something practical with... Danny's ghost. Well... 
ghoster form of being a ghost. Bye, guys.